So hello friends. Let us discuss our second part of electrostatic machine after Van de Graaff generator is electrostatic generator. What are the problems in Van de Graaff generator? It is basically essentially have the high voltage, but that can have low power devices, and their power rating exceeds few tens of kilowatts. As such, in electrostatic machines, which is very effective for the conversion of mechanical energy into electrical energy using variable capacitor principle. These are essentially duels of electromagnetic machine and are constant variable capacitor machine. So here the dual principle is used as of electromagnetic variable capacitance machine. An electrostatic generator consists of stator with interleaved rotor, that is interleaved rotor vents, forming a variable capacitor and operates in vacuum. So it operates in vacuum. The current through variable capacitor is given by I is equal to dV by dt into 1 upon C plus V into dc by dt. It means this current is equal to QV is basically differentiated. And therefore, we are getting this particular equation. So I is equal to 1 upon C dV by dt plus V dc by dt. Where C is the capacitor charge to a potential V. The power input into the circuit at any instant is P is equal to V into I. And this gives me C into V as V is multiplied to I. So C into V dV by dt plus V square dc by dt. If dc by dt is negative, mechanical energy is converted into electrical energy. With capacitor charge with DC voltage, V, that DC by dt is equal to zero and the power output will be V square multiplied by, that is, V square multiplied by DC by DT. This is the schematic diagram of a synchronous electrostatic generator. We have already heard about electrostatic machine, that is a synchronous electromagnetic generator, synchronous electromagnetic generator, called a synchronous generator or alternator. But this has a synchronous electrostatic generator with interleaved stator. So this is interleaved stator. So one is the stator with vents and therefore it acts as a capacitor. It acts as a capacitor. Then E be the electric field or you can call it as a line voltage and V be the rotor plate voltage. Now you can see this two is the rotor shaft. It is the rotor shaft and three with the rotor when. So this basically acts as the capacitor. This acts as a capacitor. The rotor is insulated from the ground and is maintained at a potential of plus V. You can see it is plus V. The rotor to stator capacitance varies from Cm to C0. Cm to C0. And the stator is connected to common point between two rectifiers. Between two rectifiers. The rectifiers are A and B. So that the DC voltage can be developed from it. The DC output voltage is minus E volts. When the capacitance of the rotor is maximum Cm, the rectifier B doesn't conduct and the stator is at ground potential. The potential E is applied across the rectifier A and V is applied across Cm. As the rotor rotates, the capacitance C decreases and the voltage across C increases. Thus, the stator becomes more negative with respect to ground. 
when the stator reaches the line potential when the stator reaches to the line potential minus e the rectifier a conducts and further moment of the rotor causes the current to flow from generator rectifier b will now have e across it and the charge left in the generator will be q0 which is c0 into v plus e plus e into cs plus cr where cs be the stator capacitance to earth and cr be the capacitance to rectifier b to earth where c0 is the minimum capacitance value of c that is stator to rotor capacitance a generator of this type with an output voltage of 1 mega volt and a field gradient of 1 mega volt per centimeter in high vacuum and having 16 rotor poles 15 rotor plates of 4 feet maximum and 2 feet minimum diameter and a speed of 4000 rpm would develop 7 megawatt of power so this is all about the electrostatic generator which is used for the generation of dc power and that can be utilized to test the specimen or to test the insulation this can be used to test the specimen or insulation so thank you very much we'll see our next topic in next lecture